my wife had to take care of two babies last night. I, uh, I got food poisoning. I didn't think I was going to come in today. Yeah. Oh, it was bad. It was so bad. I, I don't know, chicken, Greek yogurt. I, I mean, I had some queso dip. It wasn't the queso. It was never, it's never the queso. That's probably too much for all this. Yeah. The chill. Yeah, I had like the chills. I was sweating. And, uh, and then, yeah, <laughs> the only prescription would have been more cowbell. Okay, everybody, when it comes to paint, black gets a bad rap. I mean, all blacks get a bad rap. Uh, some schools even ban them. It's, it's crazy. But, but why, where does this color prosecution come from? Why are blacks prosecuted in the artist community? I mean, I'd like to know. I don't think it's right. Well, there's a few misconceptions. You know, the world is not black and white, shades of gray, despite the nose over there. What are some things you might have heard about black? Well, you might have heard it'll dull your painting. You might have heard it muddies your colors. You might have heard that real portrait artists don't use black. Might have heard that. Did you hear that? Are you even listening? Where did this first start? Well, it really started with the Impressionistic movement, okay? A lot of people like Monet and uh, what's another Impressionistic artist? I probably have it written down. Oh yeah, John Singer Sargent. They, um, they kind of were like against using black. They, they said, no, that's not reflective of nature and you should be mixing your own black. That thought process got ingrained in everybody's head and we thought we shouldn't use black paint. It's just not okay. But that's not true, okay? It's important that we understand what we're dealing with because there's a lot of options for black. And there is a place to mix your own black, but just because you're using straight black does not mean that you're dulling your colors if you're using them properly, which we'll, we'll go through. And it does not mean that you're not a real artist because real artists use what they have available to them. That's, that's the bigger message. So let's look at three of the most common blacks. A black paint, by definition, in terms of, uh, you know, a, a single pigment, okay? Look right here real close, Will. You see PBK9, all right? So PBK, pigment black, uh, nine, and that's your bone black or ivory black. A single pigment black paint has to have that PBK pigment in it, okay? So these are all single pigment blacks. All of these blacks will, they'll all lean towards a blue bias, but the Mars black is the most red of the three. But it's important to kind of know where each of their places. So ivory black, Mars black, carbon black. Carbon black is going to be your most powerful, okay? And let's just look at what kind of hue we get or what kind of tone we get when we add some white. And I use not very much of that black and you can see I get this deep, cool, gray. Now your, your baby bear, okay, your middle of the road, um, and probably your most uh, general use, like, you know, your go-to black will be Mars black, okay? Like I said, out of all of the black pigments, it biases blue the least. It's got decent covering power, decent tinting strength, but not as much as carbon black. So let me just take about the same amount of that. just that you guys can see what you're dealing with. You see how that kind of has a, you know, I'm hoping the cameras pick that up, a little bit more of a, of a bias, towards, um, bias towards red than blue, just slightly. And then finally, ivory black, which is gonna be your, your least potent black. It's gonna have the least tinting strength that will have the least opacity. Um, still a great color, still a very popular color, but just you have to know what you're dealing with. So I'll use about the same amount in that, and yeah, you can see that it makes a very light, cool gray, depending on how much you use. All right, let me add a little bit more, just to have fun. Okay, so how are people misusing or mistreating blacks, okay? If you're mistreating blacks, it's probably because you're using too much. It can, it can dull any color, but that's its job. It's, it's designed to knock down a heavier, uh, you know, pigmented paint, especially some of the really high tinning strength or uh, opacity. That's what they're designed to do to bring them down. If you use too much, it can create a little bit of mud. I mean, a little bit. But if you use 
the right amount, if you use what you need and not more, it will create really nice effects. Now, the most important thing that I want you to realize is when it comes to um, what we see as visually exciting, right? So when it comes to your art, contrast is king. So having really rich, deep blacks in your art cre helps create contrast, lights against darks, and that creates luminous paintings, not flat, dull pla paintings, planings. Uh, planings? I'm losing it. I need more Mountain Dew. So I'm sitting here and I'm telling you that, you know, there are different variations and they all sort of bias blue, but why does that matter? Why does it matter if a color um, biases blue instead of red? I mean, does it really affect the art that much? Well, it depends on the colors that you're mixing it with. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to strike this, okay, because I need a break because I've been standing for almost seven minutes. And we're going to start showing you some ways that you can mix your own black. And what we're going to do is talk about chromatic black, okay? You want to know what that means? You'll have to stick around and wait. Before we move on to chromatic black, there's one thing that I forgot to mention, and that is um, when it comes to, especially acrylic paint, uh, a lot of people l gravitate towards carbon black for the simple reason that it has the most shine. It's shiny, shiny. And you know, if you, you know, want to consider what gives you the most contrast and what has the most vibrancy. The shinier, the glossier it is, the more vibrant the color is. And something like ivory black looks a little dull, so you know, you might think that that won't have this, it might ruin your painting, it won't look as pretty, right? Well, here's the thing. Like I said earlier, these two are the opposite ends of the spectrum. Carbon black is very powerful, ivory black a little bit, you know, weaker on the tinting strength and covering power, okay, so opacity. But when it comes to acrylic, even oil, you can gloss and glaze over them later. So don't worry about how it looks um, when you first put the color down because you can always use a gloss medium or Demar varnish, whatever you're going to use to get that sheen even, okay? So that's, that's an important thing. Don't, don't gravitate towards the carbon black just because it's shiny because it's a natural thing to do. I've done that in the past. I gravitate towards certain blacks and avoid others. Um, but, you know, carbon black is definitely the, the blackest black and I liked it. The important thing here to remember is that black paint matters in your art, okay? And when you use black, what? All blacks matter in your art. So what is a chromatic black? I mentioned chromatic black earlier, okay? A chromatic black is not a real black at all, okay? It's a posing black, okay? And what that means is that when you mix this black, it's a mixed black, there is no PBK. Let's put that up there, PBK. There is no PBK pigment black in the mixture, okay? If there is, even if it's just a portion of it, you know, like if you used, let's say, Prussian blue instead of an ultramarine blue, you might get a deeper black, but it's not a chromatic black because Prussian blue has, as part of it, PBK in it. Let's look at some really simple ways that you can mix black. Ultramarine blue, burnt umber, okay? So let's just put some of these things together here and see what we get. Now, because I am controlling how much of each one goes in, I can control the bias it leaned towards. I can control if I want it to be a bluer um, black, I add more ultramarine blue. If I want it to be a little redder, I add more burnt umber. And if you don't have burnt umber or burnt sienna, it will work just the same, but these are the colors we're using today and you can see the black we can achieve. Now, let me knock that down with a little bit of white, okay? So this looks a little blue to me. Do you see that little bit of blue? In fact, I can I haven't mixed very well, so I can still see a little bit of blue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some more of that burnt umber, and we're gonna warm that up. We might have to speed this up. So you see there, it's like more of like a warm French gray now. There we go. Okay. Gamblin makes a pre-mixed chromatic black. Okay. Let me show you this. So this is a pre-mixed black. So this is not ivory black, bone black, carbon black, Mars black. Actually, ivory and Mars are the same thing. Um, this is a black that consists of two colors mixed together. And those two colors are a, a phthalo... Um, emerald or phthalo green and a um, 
uh, quinacridone red or uh, we're using Matisse's uh, rose matter here. It's, it's, it's PV19, so they're both the same. Um, and of course, this is oil paint, but in acrylics, the same thing applies. So here we go. We have rose matter and Matisse emerald, okay? Now, Matisse emerald is a phthalo green, and if you've been following our videos on pigments, you know phthalo colors have a very high tinting strength, so they're very powerful. So it starts like Christmas, and then we slowly move towards Black Friday. So the more of this emerald I add to it, the more it will bias blue. The more of the um, rose matter I add to it, the more it will bias red. Now I'll uh, cut that in with a little bit of white. And I've got a lot of red in this. <laughs> There's more red. Okay, so these are both examples of chromatic blacks. They are black paints that are mixed with no PBK, no black pigment in them. Now, I told you earlier that I was going to explain to you why this is important, okay? And I'm going to get to that in a second. I need, a, I need another break. I'm exhausted. I'm freaking exhausted, James. So, why use a chromatic black? As we've discussed, because it's not that opaque, high covering power of a black pigment, it will be more subtle in the way it affects your paints. Also, it will not necessarily um, affect your color shifting when mixing uh, quite as strongly as using just a pure black pigmented paint. Let me just show you the perfect example of that because depending on the color you're mixing it with, it can make a big difference. So I've got cad yellow here, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right into my mixture of, well, let me start with the um, Mars black. I'm gonna take some Mars black and mix it in with this cad yellow. And one of the first things that I noticed when I mixed cad yellow with Mars black, now remember that Mars black is a blue, a blue bias black. I start to get this kind of greenish color, okay? But I'm trying to, by adding black to a yellow, I'm trying to bring down the intensity but not change it to green, right? Right, that's what I'm trying to do. Somebody tell me that's what I'm trying to do. Let's see what happens when I add that chromatic black into my um, cad yellow. And this is just the combination of ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Do you see how the color turns, it turns almost more mustardy than green, okay? And if I do notice that it is getting greenish, I can add just a little touch more of that uh, burnt umber. So do you see the difference of those two there? This is, this is started to tint to like a muddier green. Okay, this is staying a, a, a deeper valued yellow. Okay, that's, that's the important thing um, to realize when you're, mixing, when you're mixing your colors is how they will affect your other colors and knowledge is power. Now there's actually something called Vanta Black. Okay, and this is more of a more recent development in, in, in the world of pigment. And what it is, let me look at it. Okay, it's the blackest artificial substance absorbing up to 99.965% of light. What the pigment is, is vertically aligned carbon nanotuberase. How's that for some artist iron standard? I, I would repeat that, but you can rewind it. What does that mean? To create that deep, rich black color, black needs to absorb the light, not reflect the light. We got some of this stuff um, from overseas. It was available in England. We had, we had to wait four months for it to get here. It came on a boat. You can see all kinds of videos on YouTube uh, about Vanta Black, but you can kind of get an idea here. So this is all crumpled up tin foil, and you can see where the Vanta Black's gone. There's a lot of um, a richer, deeper. It almost forms a bit of a black hole in the center where you can see all these peaks and valleys. And some of these over here got a little chunky. With I got chunky with my paint. Artist problem. But down here, you can see how it's not allowing that light to bounce back and that creates that more black hole effect. Is this for artists? I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm sure you could. I mean, anything is for artists, but I'm sure that there's more applications for it in the, 
engineering world. I don't, I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. It's not yin min blue. It's this is something a little different. You need to understand where the real problems lie. You know, and the problems are not blacks. Uh, most of the time, especially for watercolor artists, the problems are whites. Uh, whites. Oh, this is very racially charged. Chinese white is an opaque white for watercolor, but a watercolor purist, stay with me guys, there's logic here, will tell you that the white is of the paper, not of the paint. So it's, a watercolor purist would say that's cheating to use Chinese white in your paintings. Oh boy, I didn't name the paint. That's literally what it's called. So remember that whites are more of an issue than blacks. Oh my God, everybody calm down. So what are your rules for black? Do you allow black on your palette? Do you like to mix your own black? How do you feel about black as a color in your artwork? How do you feel about it uh, when you're mixing your own? What's your recipe? I think a lot of people would like to know different recipes for how they mix their own. Paint with black, don't paint with black, but whatever you do, paint with me on Instagram at Mike Not Jerry. I did that one well, yeah. Uh, where I continue to upload things uh, regarding art and my daughter. Whatever I post for my daughter exponentially does better for some reason. And it is true what they say. Once you go... Was that too much? A little too much? All right, cut it down so it's not so much. This is just what I write when I'm in the shower. Am I gonna do more talking? Do I ever not do more talking? <laughs>